I'd like to call the Springfield Economic Development Agency, CEDA, meeting to order with roll call, please. Here. Board Member Bowling. Chair Rodley. Here. Board Member Blackwell. Here. Vice Chair Doyle. Here. Board Member Pichonary. Here. And Board Member Laval. Here. Thank you. And Board Member Mo is excused for the evening. There is one time designated for public testimony this evening under business from the audience. If you are attending in person, please complete the request to speak card located at the city recorder's desk or by the front door in the council chambers and turn it into the city recorder. If you are joining us online with a tablet, smartphone, or computer and wish to speak either of those times, please use the raised hand feature in Zoom. And the order of public testimony is as follows, anyone in person in council chambers, and then anyone who has raised their virtual hand. Next item. Next item is the consent calendar. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the consent calendar. Second. Vote please. How about all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstained? All right, then it passes. Okay, next item, please. Next item is business from the audience. All right, and I have one card for this item. Kimberly Young, if you would please come on up to the podium, and there's a little button there that when you push it, it'll turn green, and then you will have three minutes. Hi, I am Kimberly Young. I'm here on behalf of Vino and Van Gogh and Pauline Howder. Um, you guys are going to be discussing her potential rent um, lease agreement and renewing that and the potential that she has for having some of those late fees forgiven. Um, I am her new business administrator, and I've just stepped in as of a couple of months ago to help her sort everything. And um, I've known Pauline for about a year. I'd like to say that I think she's an amazing member of the community, and she does a lot of positive things. Um, she donates to all of the charities and nonprofits for their auctions and that kind of thing. And um, so I would like to continue to be part of the community and make really positive changes. And so I will be kind of her new community liaison, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys in that respect and um, seeing you guys around town more because I'll be a bigger presence. And um, so I would like to humbly request that we adopt option one when you see it there on the paperwork, uh, which uh, allows Pauline to pay back all of the... <clears throat> all of the back rent that is owed for the space that she occupies while forgiving the late fees and the um, the uh, interest that is owed. Um, she did have a, a big uh, loss in the COVID fiasco and they took a long time to recover. Uh, our business is very much in person and when people weren't doing anything in person or they were afraid to be around other members of the community, it was very hard to bring people in to a, a public space to do art parties. Um, she did move to doing a lot of stuff online and she did what she could to pull it all together. Um, and I you know, given what she went through, I think she did a pretty good job. She also wasn't aware of all of the economic stimulus money that was available. So while she did get like the PPP loan and that kind of thing, there was a lot of state level assistance that was available that she just wasn't aware of. And, and she didn't have somebody there to help her through it. So I think if she would have been able to take advantage of those things, she wouldn't have fallen behind on rent like she did. Um, so I, I guess we're just throwing ourselves on the mercy of the city council to, to please uh, consider forgiving those and letting us catch it up and, uh, and start a new fresh Vino and Van Gogh. So thank you very much. Thank you for your public comment. Are there any more in the room or online? We have one hand raised online. It's Daphne Mantis. And Daphne, you should be able to unmute your microphone. Um, I'm Daphne Mantis, and I live on West E Street in Springfield. And I have in the past requested of the board that they provide... Excuse, excuse me, Daphne, could you hold for a moment? And we'll restart your time. We're having a really hard time hearing you. So we're okay. going to see if we can adjust the volume on our end, and maybe you could adjust the volume on your end. Um, I'll speak louder. 
Okay, that should work. Thank you. Okay. So I'm Daphne Nampus, and I live on West D Street in Springfield. I have in the past asked the board to update at every meeting as to progress on the you know, master plan. And I requested this several times in the last year, particularly as the timelines in the initial proposal back in June of 2023 were passing by and not being completed. In particular, my concern was that the outreach as stated in the initial proposal was not happening, not to the community, not to the neighborhood. There wasn't any open house that was supposed to happen six months ago. And while I understand that what's before the board is to, you know, basically amend the contract to include the annexation, the changes in the zoning and development code that might be needed. My concern is that there hasn't been presented, there wasn't presented in the October um, review of the explanation as to why the timelines weren't being met and my concern also is that there's not inclusion of a clear plan other than the required, I mean, you have to go before the planning commission and you have to appear at city, the city um, meetings in order to get these things, processes completed, but there isn't clearly included the community outreach. Um, so I get, when they're working on West D Street, I get printed information about the process from the city. Um, so I, I am concerned about the length now before there is a master plan, the length of time from one year to basically three years time. And I'm concerned about the informing and involving the community. Thank you. Thank you for your public comment. We have no other hands raised for this item. All right, next item, please. Uh, next item is public hearings, new business. Item number one is the CETA logo redesign and Alley Camp is here for this item. Good evening, CETA board. Good to see you all. Um, Allie Camp, economic development manager. Um, and Allison, could we pull that logo up on the screen? Thank you. Um, up on the screen, we have a proposed new CETA logo. Uh, this logo was created at the coordination with a designer. That designer presented options to lead CETA leadership, former CETA leadership, back in the fall and winter of this year. Uh, the options presented to leadership reflect goals of the two urban renewal plans, plus the words provided in your AIS for things like art, prosperity, um, continued community investment. Um, with those options presented to CETA leadership, uh, they made refinements, and we are uh, presented with the option in front of you today. A similar process was used in 2019 for the museum logo refresh. Staff coordinated with a designer and with input from key stakeholders. Our key stakeholders in this circumstance were CETA leadership. The logo serves a purpose. It reflects the work of the CETA board. And in a process like this, it helps us to achieve two outcomes, to have a refreshed logo and to keep the CETA board committed to the work ahead of us. Uh, I'm available for questions if you have any. Is there a picture of the old one? 
so I can have a comparison. Oh, I'm just yeah. curious. I don't know what the other one looked like. Yeah, I don't have one handy, but that's a great. Hmm. We can track one real quick and pull it up. Joe. I think it looks great. <laughs> Thank you. Sean. I think it looks great too. Um, I had one question. When is there a version of it that 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 uh, if you shrunk if you shrunk it down really really small, are the letters that say Springfield Economic Development Agency too small to read? Is there a version of it uh, that is for smaller print? Mm. Our designer has provided us with style guidelines so that we can preserve the integrity of the logo. That considers things like color and size. There is a size that's too small. Um, I don't have that offhand of what it is. Perfect. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Um, I, I want to add to those comments. I think it looks really great. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I was just joking, but um, I mean, the thing that I think a logo needs to look at is, is, is it, we're probably never going to put this on a billboard, I would imagine, and we're probably never going to put it on a ball cap. And the question is why we should be able to, but I think it looks good enough and simple enough to do both of those. So well done. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, I'm um, entertain a motion. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the use of the redesigned CETA logo for CETA projects, programs, and communications. I second this outstanding motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Stained. All right, we have a new logo. Next item, please. Uh, next item is the lease and repayment plan for 236 through 240 Main Street. And Allie Camp is here for this item as well. Hi all, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to provide some history um, of this tenant and CETA's uh, tenancy with this individual. Uh, we purchased this building 236 and 240 in July of 2021. And uh, with it came this tenant. Um, we carried on the leases from the former tenant the, or from the former owner, the former owner was sub. Uh, those are included in attachment one in your packet. Um, CETA had one additional lease with this tenant for storage space, which is included as attachment four in your packet. Um, we're here today because this tenant has fallen behind in rent. Historically, this tenant has remained at least one month behind in rent since December of 21. Uh, they caught up for a little bit throughout the summer of 23, um, but we have unpaid rent dating back to August of 23. Um, a payment has been made since your packet was published, so the numbers in front of you are not accurate. That payment was for $1,300. Uh, the Senate adds to the vitality of downtown, as you heard from her employee, um, and has been well established in the downtown for over a decade. They are actively offering classes, and they have a depth of knowledge and talent in art that they share with Springfield. Um, staff have brought forward a draft lease, which is attachment two. It has a watermark that says draft on it. Um, this lease proposes to combine two lease spaces together and a payment plan with it to support this payment being successful in downtown or this tenant being successful in downtown. Should CETA choose to support a new lease, a decision on how to structure the repayment plan will be needed tonight. Uh, your board briefing memo shows a calculation of the fees and interest due as written in the leases from both sub and the city's lease for the storage or CETA's lease for the storage. Um, and then there's a chart that demonstrates kind of the options you have in front of you for how to assist this tenant with a payment plan should you choose. Um, just briefly, the first column is a consideration of whether to apply the lease specified interest in fees or not, top and bottom, yes and no, or no and yes. Uh, and then the second column is to apply interest to the payment plan itself or not, no and yes. Um, just a note, too, that while CETA does not have current plans for the building, should the tenant not remain in good standing, relocation benefits cannot be extended to them. I think that's all. So the table that she's talking about is attachment to page 18 of 18 for folks who are trying to find that. Yeah, attachment to page 18 of 18. Yeah. 
Oh, mine says 18. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Board member level. Thank you, Chair. I just want to make sure I heard that right, Allie, when you said at the end, um, because this tenant is no longer in good lease standing, they're not eligible for relocation benefits have, if they decide, if we decide not to proceed. Is that what I heard right? Correct. You need to meet the terms of your lease to be eligible for relocation. Yeah, that's actually not exactly correct. Oh, so can I, sorry, mm -hmm. um, Christina Cross, Assistant City Attorney. Um, so if, if a tenant is evicted for non-payment of rent, then they are not eligible for relocation benefits associated with that eviction. If a tenant has been in non-compliance and then comes into compliance and is in good standing at the time that CETA creates a, um, has a project that causes them to relocate, then they would be eligible at that time. If they're not in good standing in the lease under default at that time, then CETA would have the choice to evict them or um, to offer relocation benefits. Um, and it, the intent, I think, with the new lease is that if they fall behind this repayment plan, that we would proceed with the eviction um, process without coming back to council if council approves a new lease. Or sorry, if the seat of board approves a new lease. Great, thank you. That's what I thought. Other comments? Joe. So. so what is save me a little bit of time here? I can know I can decipher it. What is the monthly rent? 13? And then it shows a total amount due with late fees of what sixteen thousand something sixteen nine twenty seven is that correct? In total, from the combined uh, fees of the three leases, yes. Okay, so they're, they've got three leases with us, Chris. Right? Um, two. They have terminated one of them, but okay. still, those fees will apply to the money owed. Um, okay, to so she's got some holdover from the one of the leases that's compounded onto the second lease or second third lease they're combined together yeah so there's now it's still just one lease but it's two properties two properties two leases okay yeah oh one's a storage facility one's a business end. okay so i i um i've got mixed emotions a lot of mixed emotions about this um she came up here and she indicated that she's very active in in donating to nonprofits. And if you're donating to nonprofits, that means that's disposable income in my mind, and that um, that it it lends lends me to think that there was disposable money that could have been going towards rent. So that part I'm, I'm having a hard time getting over that in regards to looking at it as forgivable. Second is that the uh, the SBA, the Small Business Administration, was quite clear nationally in regards to offering small business, not only just loans, but forgivable loans to help them through the COVID. And that was literally amount of, literally you asked, you asked them for a certain amount of money and they typically would award that amount of money and forgive that amount of money in regards to payback. So those monies could actually have gone towards rent and fees. So um, in that case, no, you can't talk now. You you had your chance. <laughs> so for right now, um, it's my my turn. And so um, so I, I I even though my soft part, compassionate part of me is wanting to say, you know, let's just get them start again and forgive everything. But it's it's difficult for me to get there when when they are active in the community and and providing financial support to nonprofits. When I think did they are they a nonprofit as well? Or no. Okay, so they're a business. So I, I think that we can work out a schedule, maybe extend it. And I don't believe that at this point, they have the ability to, if they show the ability to pay a full amount of the lease monthly payment, and they don't get behind after this and give them a schedule in which to catch up on the others without it accruing interest. So stopping the clock on the interest charged, and then in my mind, get them caught up on the lease payments at a certain amount for a certain period out for however it takes, you know, if you, even if it's $150 or $200 more per month to make up for what's been not paid. And then if they can go to that and they get paid correctly and, and back pay all the, all the rent or all the lease payments and they actually get that done, then I would say, Hey, let's maybe forgive those late fees. Does that make sense? 
It does. Thank you. Um, what you're seeing in terms of the repayment plan in front of you is for a 12 month period. Uh -huh. If the CETA board wants to see that extended over a longer period of time to minimize the payments to catch up, you could do mm -hmm. that as well. So I, I, I think that's where I'm at is if you can show and get, get all the lease payments made up and on a program that you don't fall one penny behind for that period of time, then I would entertain coming back and saying, okay, Allie coming back to, to us and saying, hey, they've paid everything up as scheduled. Do you want to forgive those those fees or those fines? And that's where I'm at. That would be in a simple, just pay what you owe over a period of time. That would be option one in the yes. repayment plan. Okay, well, so all those words boil down to is I am in favor of option one. So attachment three, two of two is where the 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 right. table is that has options one, two, three, and four. Other comments, questions. Hey, Shell. Thank you. Um, I am all for supporting business owners in um, being successful. Um, one thing I have a concern. So as a when I did collections way back in my earlier life. Um, it would have been really important to me to see the business owner in front of me um, asking for my consideration. Um, so I'm a little disappointed, honestly, to not see Pauline here tonight. Um, and I, I appreciate the words because it does help me understand a little bit. Like my biggest concern was if we've had these, these struggles to, to keep our rent current, how is tacking on another additional amount to her monthly rent going to help? That's, you know, and I still have that concern. Um, you know, we're adding an additional expense for a business advisor, which I think is probably much needed, but just, I'm just concerned about um, uh, about the, the future of, you know, or her ability to pay these payments. And again, I'm all for supporting and giving that opportunity, but just, I'm just a little bit, you know, one concern to not see Pauline here today to, to kind of stand up for her business. That. Okay, board member Lobo. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I want to get a couple things straight a little bit. You said that we that we have not received rent since last October. Is that what I'm? I, the table indicates that there has been rent not received since October twenty three. Is that correct? Yes, because well, let me specify. Um, because we have a couple of leases with this tenant. One lease for the storage four hundred dollars has been not paid since. August of 23. I believe August. And then as payments come in, they are applied to the past due amount for the property noted on the check. So the 236 and 240 um, payments do have been catching up because payments have been made. However, they've not been on time and we're still in kind of that like um, hole that has been created. So we've been receiving rent and it's going towards the past due amount because right. there is a gap in time where no rent was received. Right. Um, I, I have a lot of the same sentiments as Commissioner or Councilor Weber does about, um, uh, and this is a business I'm in, so I, I've got a heart for this. And, you know, COVID was really tough on landlords as it was on tenants. And I think we're still recovering from some of that. And there's some businesses that just because of the basic economics and price of things, us as landlords are working through people and we, we receive late payments and we work with them. So I, I'm this is a game that I play nearly every day. Um, my concern is just in my experience is when someone's this far behind, um, the, the chance of them catching up is kind of like a lotto ticket. And I, I, I don't want to say that, but it's just the reality of what the situation is in uh, regard to uh, Councillor Pishonary's suggestion about, well, what if she could pay back, you know, $150 a month and we could extend that out? That would be a nine year and three, nine year, three year contract if there was no interest. And I, I have a really hard time seeing that coming to an end, to a logical end. Um, and, and typically, I think Councillor Weber would agree with me too, in the banking industry, if you're four months behind, there's already proceedings going on. If you're this far behind in your house, typically there's a foreclosure that's looming in the in the, in the the woodwork. And because that's, that's just the nature of the finances of how far people get behind, they just can't make that up. So there, to me, there's only really one of two options. Is, is Cita thinks that this is a valuable enough business to stay in downtown and forgive everything about this because um, obviously we're a government agency and we're not in the profit for profit business, which grinds my gears. Um, 
but uh, or we stick hard line and say, you know, we need this. And if we can't have it by a certain date, then we'll have to find either another tenant and proceed with the in inevitable, which would be an eviction. And I know that's hard to say and it's hard to endure. But um, I know from experience, sometimes when businesses get in these positions, uh, the freedom of being released from the burden allows them to think differently for their future. And they make some pretty good decisions after that. So that's what I'm hoping would happen here. <clears throat> so I appreciate everybody's comments. In fact, it's it's made me rethink my position um, that I stated earlier. And and the, the 250 or 150 month was just a random number. I knew that would be way out there and I wasn't interested in that. I was, I'm interested in getting it caught up soon, but I have to... Um, Dave, you made a lot of sense there, and it's and it's <laughs> um, it's true, and it's rough. Um, so I think I'm not sure exactly what you're recommending, though. I, I, it's really hard. It's hard, but I'm recommending that you know we're, we're I, I don't believe we're going to get this money back right. over time, and I think if if it's reasonable and we can maybe offer a. 45 or even if you're really generous, a 60 day transition period, I think that would be the best gesture you could do for this person to rethink their business plan and then be relieved of $16,000 worth of debt. I think that'd be a win win for everybody. So I, would, so I would proceed with eviction if it was me. With 60 days. So, yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking out loud. That's what we can do. Um, so I think that that is actually sounding as though I am leaning that direction um, because I keep, you know, my heart keeps tugging at me. I have, I've, I'm a landlord and I've got rental properties. And I think about if, well, if that was a tenant of mine, would I even allowed myself to get in this position this far behind? And now it's coming before me when maybe it would have, should have been maybe up in front of us five months ago. Right. So I'm thinking that, that, they know exactly what position they're in. They know exactly what financial position they're in, what they've gotten themselves into and need to assess, okay, am I ever going to get out of this? And I guess I agree with, with the commissioner love all that. I don't think they are going to be able to, but we should give them a shot, but not a very long shot. I, I think I'm okay with the 60 days and seeing 60 days needs to get paid up and we move forward with an eviction. If not. Board member Van Gordon. Okay, so I, um, I've got a couple of detailed questions and then I'll comment. Um, so the new lease, is that at market rate or downtown? Likely not. Those are the same lease rent or same rent values that were established years ago. Okay, so I'm going to tap uh, our local wealth and knowledge. Um, how much is the rent per month? In total, thirteen hundred dollars. Like seven hundred square feet. Oh, give me one second. Don't worry, you're stalling to let uh, Commissioner Lovell <laughs> try to figure out what. One suite is fourteen fifty square feet, and one suite is seventy seventy one square. That's forty cents a foot. Okay, so I think we got a couple. And how long is the would the new lease be for? Our leases are for one year, and they transition to month to month. Okay. This uh, draft, sorry to correct. This draft um, has a. While that is the standard for Booth Kelly, um, which the city owns, this lease is proposed for a one year term with an option to renew if the tenant is in good standing for two additional one year terms. At which point. Um, we could reevaluate the lease or um, terminate. Okay. And, then, and that is only a tenant remains a good standing with those renewal options. The up. payment plan is authorized as outlined in the, in the briefing packet would get them to good standing by the end of the year. Okay. It, they would, if as proposed, if monthly payments were being made, they would be in good standing continuously. Um, but if they missed any single payment, so so the debt would be broken down into basically additional rent. And okay. so each month that additional rent payment would be owed. And if they made that additional rent, then they would be in good standing under their present lease continuously during that 12 month period. But if they missed any payment, then at that point they would be in default. Wouldn't matter if that was at 12 months or 
Okay. I, that makes sense. And then at what point in what does, would CETA, if they missed payments, how far um, overdue would they have to be But before we would start, you know, additional eviction under the new lease? Let me find it in my lease. Hold on. I can never find anything reading leases. I guess that is why I'm not a landlord. Uh, default is 10 days after rent is due or um, by given notice by the landlord. Yeah. So when I listen to the testimony, right, like I hear a lot of points about uh, COVID and then I look at the rent repayment schedule and how it is aligned and it's all missing rent in 2023 and I'm still very confused about why it was never caught up with or that why we didn't talk about it to begin with but I think we have to find a path kind of forward from here um, actually I think I'm like based on where what Ali described I think I'm I think I'm fine um going with starting with the hey you with the hey you make the payments and we'll hold back the fees and if you get caught up you know i i think i'm fine with joe's initial idea um i'm concerned and have we had a, like a conversation is the business actually telling us that they can afford this in showing the numbers to pauline she conveyed to me that um a loan that they had been paying on has been paid off and she has available money to pay towards rent. I don't know how much that is. Okay. So that seems like we're like, I, that's the question I'm worried about. And maybe that, and I don't know that we, if, if we have to make a decision tonight is that's the part that I'm not hearing anybody say is that the pay, any of these payment plans that the business has enough liquidity, you know, cash flow to pay for. But assuming that question, I I think I was fine, I'm fine starting with the like get them caught up, right? You know, and I think there's a lot of issues that both Joe and Dave bring up that are really important, and you know Michelle kind of brings up a really good point too. But like we got to figure out a path forward here, and if they can make the payments, then let's make the payments. And frankly, if they can't, then I think we just follow the new lease and get everybody on a new lease. And have a new conversation, like, and work, kind of work the work, work the agreement because that was it's clear that it it needs to be updated. Vice Chair Doyle, thanks. I don't know how much we're allowed to ask for, but I would like to see some financials actually that weren't included in this, just to kind of know where this came about and how this ended up happening. And then I'm trying to understand the numbers because I'm looking at option one, and I'm looking at a uh, total the total amount sixteen thousand nine twenty seven. That's past due base rent plus fees and interest. But when I add up that 271058, the new payment, at the end of 12 months, that comes up to 25,287. So that difference is 8,300. Is that 8,300 the, the standard rent that would be? And then the 16,000 is, is the back due. So that's combined together. So you, they actually owe 25,287 over 12 months is what. I'm coming up with. Is that correct? If the fees and interest from the leases are applied to the past due money, yes. Uh, okay. So the question is, do we want to remove the fees and interest from the past due as well as not on? That's what the that's what you're asking for, or they're asking for. Yes, the payment plan. Uh, you all can decide as a board. Should you proceed? Is do we just collect the money? due from the tenant for past due rent, or do we apply the fees and interest as assigned in each of the three leases? Well, that's even more because that's option three, right? Because I'm looking at option one and I'm just looking at 2107.25 times 12 months and it comes out to $25,000. And if the past due is 16,927 of that money, then they're only paying $8,360 in rent. So what, what am I missing? Um, the option one only has a repayment of 9687 oh. So uh, over 12 months for the past due rent, there's no fees and charges. So $16,000 is not the appropriate number to apply to option one. So that $25,000 approximately represents the rent that is being charged 
1300 per month over the next 12 months. Okay. Plus 9687 for past due rent only. Okay. So we would because, only be clear. Okay. Because option one does not include any of the prior leases, late fees, and interest. Okay. So I would... Um... I would be challenged to agree to this without seeing some sort of financials or some sort of proof that this could be paid back. We have a clear path that 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 payments haven't been made, and this isn't 2022 as has been mentioned. This is tw- we're almost we're in 2024 now, so there's been time. I am very understanding about what happened during COVID, and especially in this business. I love this business. I've been there multiple times. I think it's a great thing to have in our community. But we can't ignore that there has been time that has passed almost two years. And if it was me, I would have been making double payments. I would have been eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, whatever I had to do to try to make that rent um, work. And so I'd like to just see what has happened. And if I don't know if I'm allowed, if we're allowed to ask for those financials, but that would make that would make me feel more comfortable knowing and being able to make a decision moving forward. Um, so CETA can request um financial information from the tenant to show ability to to pay the terms of the lease. And then what we would do is uh, likely request an executive session with the CETA board to review that information because it would be exempt from public disclosure. So the tenants could be assured that if they provide um, financial information to CETA in application for a lease, um, that that information is not going to be published um, for the public. Me and then you. (laughs) <laughs> so could you give us an idea of the timeline like what are we working within I mean now like how do we have could we do that if we have an executive session can we come back to this can we look at this lease in a different way or um especially it sounds like some payment has resumed um our current leases are month to month and the storage lease has been terminated. So um, if the CETA board wants to move forward with more information, you can do that. Just know that um, these numbers, the interest, the fees, time will pass and time does things to numbers. So. Okay, go ahead, Joe. I think that's a great idea. I didn't even, it's like, yeah. How should I support these? How can I support them if I don't have the numbers to be able to justify my support? And secondly, if I have the numbers in front of me and they can't justify why they can't or haven't been able to, then I know which direction I would lean. So I think we should go ahead go ahead and move forward in regards to requesting financials, going to an executive session. And then in the interim, everything keeps counting. Sean. Um, I think that's a solid, uh, that, that's a solid suggestion. I'm, I'm supportive of it. Um, and I know scheduling is always a challenge. So I want to make two, potentially three other points. One of them is it would be a very, very good idea as we work on scheduling that everybody pay, continues to pay their rent on time because it would be challenging to try to get through that conversation if we start having rent late again. The second one is, are we planning on leasing the storage space or do you have enough? Are you actively marketing it moving forward? Like, I don't know where the storage space is, but if we have space that we can, we can rent, we should be generating income from it. There's uh, that little bit of storage space behind 236, uh, which is not actively being marketed, but we certainly can. Um, And then there's a little bit of space in the 240 building called the dog building, which is also available. Um, And I think the third point, and I think we're getting to it, like this is still under market, right? Right. So I think that the lens has got to be seen from even if we make it through the next year, right? That there will, we've got to start working properties that we own that we're actively renting to make sure that we're, we're, we're renting them at the correct rate. Go ahead. Just a quick question. How proactive was the tenant at the times that the, um, the delinquent payments started happening. How proactive was the tenant in communicating with the city? Um, this was handled by another staff member, so I didn't get direct communication with the tenant. Uh, typically, if I go down to the shop, um, I can have a conversation with her about where she's at, but the payments don't always come proactively. Other comments? Okay. 
I think, and I I really appreciate how engaged everyone has been with this. And I think everyone, I'm I'm going to just make this assumption that we're all coming at this with um, compassion, and we we want to see thriving businesses in downtown Springfield. We don't want to see empty buildings. Um, we want to find a way to work with this that is that that is the best possible way forward. So give us a little bit of direction about what the timing of this looks like. Um, I don't think that we're, I mean, if we need to make a motion to not adopt any of these tonight, um, we can do that if that's what we need to do in order to move forward. So give us a little bit of like, here's what the next three steps are. Sure. Um, the board emphasized gathering additional financial information and having an executive session to make a decision. Is that what I'm hearing from everyone in favor? Um, we uh, don't have another CEDA meeting in March because Yens will be on break. Um, we can plan for this in April, either the first or the second meeting, depending on other pending calendar items. And I can touch base with CEDA leadership to schedule it. That gives us about three weeks to gather information and prep for a discussion. And is there anything that we need to do to stress that continued payments are imperative? I think you're doing it. Okay. Go ahead, Vice Chair Joyle. Just two quick things. I would be okay with suspend, because this is something that we're asking for, I would be okay with suspending interest for 30 days while, until we get this on the thing. That's me. I'm just saying there's enough interest that's been going on. Let's stop it so that we can do a review. We're only talking 30 days. Um, but I also would probably emphasize to the owner that um, if it's this important, she should be here. It's it's something that you don't send your representative. You come and and show face to face. And if you have a class, then you have someone else fill in on the class and be here. I think that that shows a lack of um, interest in it. That should I don't know how to say it in a nice way, but I think she should have been. Let, yeah, and you know I don't want to say disrespectful, but if it's that important, then you should be here for yourself. So. I heard, oh, go ahead, Christina. I was going to say, I, I don't think that the CETA board needs a motion tonight. I think the um, CETA board can take up the question of whether um, the suggestion of whether to waive the interest for the sort of CETA extension um, when you make a decision on the late fees. Um, we can track those amounts separate. I can track those amounts separately. Um, if the CETA board hadn't met at all, then we would have continued under the same month to month and late fees would continue to accrue anyway. So. Thank you. Go ahead. Chair, I just want to um, mention that it appears that Pauline was on the council um, virtual board, but did not, for whatever reason, switch over to the new link. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. That is helpful to know. Okay, we are moving on. Can I just confirm, we'll come back yes. with additional financial information from the tenant, and we propose to suspend fees in the meantime while we're prepping. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. What? what? No, I will just track separately um, fees accrued during this time, yes. and then the CETA will make a decision on those late fees at a later time. We won't, okay. nothing is suspended in terms of payment, yeah. non-payment penalties. We're losing control. Okay, the go control ahead. has been lost already. I just, I guess, wanted to point out, and we, when we met for a gender review, there were still 30 minutes left on, on April 1st, if that works out for time, and we were looking for an item. All right, last call, and we're your next item. Next item is old business. I am number one, urban renewal plan amendment, and Christina Kraz has this item. Does the board want me to move up there or is this okay? Um, how about you move okay, that way? Because I can't see you very well. And maybe everybody else can, but I can't. Thank you. Board Chair, the uh, Downtown Urban Renewal Plan includes a provision for the plan to be amended whenever CETA plans to acquire um, or is acquiring real property for future redevelopment or for public um, use. The plan amendment tonight includes the property that CETA obtained a deed in lieu of foreclosure on 
this last year, which is labeled as C, also was known as the property um, for the Blue McKenzie project. This plan amendment also includes properties labeled A and B in anticipation of negotiations with the owner for future um, sale to CETA. So it's not, does not guarantee or require CETA to purchase the property. This is just one sort of housekeeping step that demonstrates CETA intends to acquire this property for redevelopment subject to negotiations. And then if this is approved by the CETA board, it will be ratified by the city council. Comments? Yeah, I think I think it's the right way to move forward and I, I appreciate how it's put together and, it, and it's logical to me, so I support this. Anyone else? Okay, then I will entertain a motion. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt a resolution amending the downtown urban renewal plan for real property acquisition. I second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Next item is the uh, Glenwood Master Plan Contract Amendment. Allie Camp is here for this item. Uh, I'm going to take some time to lay a foundation for this conversation too. So give me a couple minutes. Thank you. Um, up on your screen, we have a concept for the Glenwood master plan area that was brought to CETA back in October. Um, and you all saw the very preliminary uh, master plan concept back in June as well. Um, to achieve these concepts, we have more land use work ahead of us. And that is the basis of your amendment today that we'll be talking about. We heard in these concept reviews that to achieve the best outcome for this project, the Glenwood Refinement Plan, plan could require changes. Uh, what we've been working on since you last saw this in October is really defining the what of the site, and then we're moving into the how do we achieve it. Uh, so in December, we had what's called a development initiation meeting. And at that meeting, we present this information to city staff and we understand the steps that lie ahead of us. And we start to piece together the most logical way to achieve those steps. The most logical way to achieve those steps are included in attachment two proposed in the amendment and with more detail included in attachment three in your board briefing memorandum. This pathway includes annexation, a zoning map and comprehensive map plan amendment and development code amendments. This is a big scope of work. This is a big property. This is a big project ahead of us. And I just like to kind of remind myself that um, with a project of this size, the potential impact for the property tax base is very large. Um, the proposed scope in front of you for the amendment also includes services to collect an infrastructure cost estimate to inform um, the cost, the one of the higher cost items of a development like this moving forward. Um, okay, so the end amendment has a value of $241,119. Uh, just a reminder that the original master planning contract was close to $670,000. Um, that master planning work will still continue. There are items on that contract that have not been accomplished yet because this land use work would plug into the current time frame. Those items would be accomplished if the CETA board approves, and then we would pick up on the master planning work after this portion of land use work would be completed. Um, a couple of reasons why we're taking this on. Um, by doing this work early, we minimize the barriers for future redevelopment. Uh, some of the barriers that I'm thinking through are process and time and economic market barriers. So um, the land use processes you have in this um, amendment in front of you allow us to kind of minimize the process with annexation by having a single jurisdiction input on single jurisdiction decision on the land use items that we need to tackle. And then for the economic and market barriers, the development code amendments and the zoning map amendments allow us to have more flexible uses uh, just in case the economy changes in the future. Um, both zones have additions of uses and have accommodations for additional housing. 
uh, your board briefing memorandum has specific details about the proposed development code and zoning map amendments. Should you like more detail there? Um, while we can't make this development market proof from future economic ebbs and flows, um, a broader scope of uses and alignment with commercial on Franklin Boulevard assure that we can uh, proceed understanding the market conditions today and knowing that they could be supported in the future as well. Um, just a note on the proposed residential code, development code amendments, um, that would be to incorporate more uses that are suitable and supportable with residential. And then for the proposed commercial code amendments, um, there would there's a change proposed to allow buildings with more housing or just housing, so only housing. Um, we've also included in your packet uh, attachment four, which is a draft proposed schedule. Again, this is a big body of work. We need to understand how we most efficiently navigate all these processes together. Uh, I really like that schedule because it shows how we're seeking to optimize downtime between applications or amidst applications. Um, these larger land use pieces could take upwards of a year to complete, and you'll see from that schedule that we've sought to schedule them very efficiently. Um, I just like to remind myself that we are kind of squarely in this land use and entitlement phase. Um, this is the phase of a development project like this where we get the land right for future development. We can't predict what will happen here in the future, but understanding that we're taking the step now to assure that we have more flexibility in the future um, and, and try to market proof this development um, is helpful. Let me check my notes real quick. Uh, we have a couple of experts on the call. Lori from Raubocca Ar Architects. I've always had trouble saying that. Um, Rick and Dan from Satri Group, and then Mark and Jill, who are our CETA selected developers for the site moving forward. Um, a couple of things I just want to note, too. Uh, we have support from both private property owners who are on the east and the west side of this for this land use strategy. Um, this strategy saves us time brings us the most certainty with how the master plan can be approved moving forward. It does um, annex their properties sooner. However, they are supportive of this and we're working with them to um, collaborate, collaboratively um, figure out how to assure that they um, are, are kind of accommodated or captured um, so the annexation can support the project. When we annex early, that essentially saves the whole project time. Um, and these property owners understand that and our development team understands that as well. Okay. So in front of you, you have an amendment for the master planning work. I'm available for questions. Our experts on the line are available for questions too, should they fall outside of my scope of understanding. All right. <laughs> Vice Chair Doyle. Thank you. Thanks. First off, I want to say that I love having a schedule. I don't care that it goes out to 26. I love seeing that linear look of, of a plan that can be flexible, but that you have a vision moving out and how these things can go. Something that I had mentioned to you, and I don't know if you've considered, is that we haven't fully uh, locked in any potential changes to uh, land use costs, um, rates. Um, that's something that's coming up, I think, in the next couple months. So I don't know when the decision will be to actually put these plans in for, um, you know, to get them to get them submitted. But I don't know if that's something we may want to consider, if it's something that can happen you know, in the new fiscal year, or um, if you just want to go for it, I'm just wondering, because that could save, um, it could save money. I don't know, maybe it could go the other way, <laughs> but I'm hoping that it would save money um, because the fees schedules might change, especially when it comes to annexations and, you know, plan amendments and things like that. So those are the only two things I have, but I'm okay with everything else. Oh, and I might just make a comment for that. So this is a, a, you'll see at the very top, a very generalized process calendar. Um, the only item set for potential submission prior to the new fiscal year's annexation. 
Oh, okay. So those rest of those processes would come later. And then the other thing, I don't know if this relates to the um, person who spoke online um, and asked the questions and had the concerns, but I hope that you might have got her name and that maybe we could follow up with her on on what she was concerned about. Thank you. Other comments, thoughts? Um, I just have one to say before we move on to what we want to do about this. Um, I, as we've been talking about this and preparing for this meeting, one of the, the things that I think is an important consideration for me is um, while it is an additional expense now, and I poked around a little bit and, and picked on Allie about it because I said, I want to, how is this going to save us money down the line? Um, because again, we've been putting all of these place these pieces in place so that once we move forward with this we just it, it gets to go um and so one of the questions i asked was about how if we do this this work up front around this how that will trickle out to other similar pieces of property with similar land use and she provided a map and we were able to talk it through so i was just like this is an important thing it's like money up front but it should save money down the line and help us to move faster once we start moving Okay, I'm ready for a motion. Um, Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the contract amendment for land use is it services for the Glenwood area, our master plan area. I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The opposed? All right, it passes. And if aye. I'm not mistaken, that is our last item in a very fantastic meeting. So thank you, Allie, for all your prep and we are adjourned.